and I actually witnessed it burn a chicken's leg off one time. Good live chicken. Ho, 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 ho. But, Give me that. I got to have it. You can't, you can't <laughs> just give me a, a chicken's leg, leg off. off. Tell me this story. Yeah, well. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Hating Alabama podcast. I'm Philip. I'm Shane. I'm Steve. And I'm Jim. It's springtime, and most people are thinking about planting, farming, rural life. It's just a big part of who we are and what we do. And so today we got some stories about farming, some stories about cattle. Shane, you you got a good one you want to kick off with? Yeah, you know we were talking about cattle to start with, and I and I said, hey, let's let's tell these folks about how how cows would rather die than they had live. <laughs> I mean, that's just it's just then they're it's like they're bred to want to do something. To end their life, and the other day, other day I saw a Facebook page, a post, and the guy he's showing a picture of his bull, his prize bull out there, and he has his head rammed through a like a gate, like how how he got his head through a gate, I I, I have no idea, but it reminded me of a story. When I was a kid, my uncle raised cows out here by the house, and he had a big old Charlet bull. And this thing was a, it was a, it was a beast, you know, Charlay's big bone, heavy, and he was going to get new blood, you know, from time to time, you got to get new blood and you, and you heard, well, we're going to catch him up in there in the upper pass. Oh, we're going to catch him. We're going to catch him. And my uncle, if you knew anything about my uncle Hubert, he didn't, he did things on a budget, we'd say, Right. Like most farmers. Like most farmers. <laughs> yeah, let's just say that's like most farmers. On a budget, he's going to catch it. He, he's got a he's got a bumper pull cattle trailer. He's he's rigged up some catch panels, and they weren't the high dollar heavy panels. It was the the budget panels, and he's put them in a in a U shape around that. And this Charlay bull for the for the most part was a calm. As 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 good as you can be for a Charlotte bull, calm bull. And he'd bucket feed him. You know, he would follow him around with a bucket. Well, he got him in that catch panel with the feed bucket. We lock him up. And I, I'm, again, I'm eight, maybe nine years old. And I'm more watching than I'm doing helping. Oh, yeah. So I'm on the side of the cattle trailer, you know, looking and watching my, my uncle and my, my dad and, and his brother are there helping and they go to try to push him into this trailer. Well, now the bull has gotten a little suspicious. I'm I'm getting locked up. I'm getting a little bit close. And I'm not near as comfortable as I was out there in this 40-acre pasture. So they start pushing him in the tra- in the trailer and he's getting a little bit more agitated, a little bit more agitated. Well, along the lines of getting agitated, my uncle as well. A little more agitated, a little more why ain't you going on the trailer? All you got to do is step on. And if you know anything about cattle, they don't like to step up onto anything. If they can walk, no big deal. But if you got you a 12-inch step, you might as well be a mountain, you know, that they got to jump off of. So they he'd go up that trailer and he and they and they'd they'd smack him on the back with a pole, one of the sorting poles, and and he'd turn around and look at them like, boys, I ain't going on that trailer. Three or four times, back and around. And the more agitated, the more agitated. The last time, the bull said, I'm I'm done. And he turned around, and he come to, just towards the end of that U. And he put his head underneath that cattle panel, and he picks it up. And it gets, you know, when, when bulls stand up, when they got, they got the shoulders right here, and it caught them across the middle of their shoulders. And he took off towards the creek just in a dead sprint. When he did, it just snaps the ropes because we had the the panels tied to the cattle trailer. Snaps the rope. He takes 10 panels to the creek, just a steady run. Well, he can't get them off of it. He's trying to get them off. The cattle panels, they're just following behind Jingling him. along. Just we, like a train. We call that making a necklace. And he, and he sure did. He hits the creek. And when he hits the creek, the U, every, uh, the whole panels, you know, just up in a U. And then these panels are, are bolted together or, or pinned together. Well, they just collapse on top of him. And in my eight-year-old mind, I'm thinking, 
what is going on? Oh, like, yeah. This is insanity. I, and I, of course, thought, well, he's dead. He's a goner. He he's not making it up. He's broke every leg that he's got. He he just stands up, shakes a little, you know, and starts bellering, calling all his girlfriends back up. It's like I told y'all I wouldn't go leaving this place. Look what he, I done. He wasn't leaving his girlfriends, buddy. I tell that, people that was all my the time when you go by a nice quiet pasture and the cows are laying out there yeah. in the shade on the trees they're plotting they're trying to figure out how to mess with the farmer mess with the farmer <laughs> yeah that's this, their mo that's right this is the time of year when they'll do it when the grass is greening up mm-hmm. the calves get a little frisky and they look around and say the other side of the fence looks better and they'll yep. find the smallest hole that they can look for and go through that hole and mine when they go through the hole do they stay on the other side and eat the grass? Oh, no. They got to go across the highway. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then, well. then the police give me a call and say, uh, <laughs> cows Steve, out. cow's out again. This is the time of the year, you know, where the grass really is greener on the other side <laughs> of the fence. And it's greenest of all next to a highway. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> are you in trouble? Well, we hope you're not. But just in case you are, we know a good lawyer. Whitney Island here in Hayden, Alabama has law services. Or maybe if you're not from Hayden, I'm sure she'd be happy to hear from you. So check her out at uh, islandlaw.com. We appreciate Whitney and uh, her sponsoring the show. I think every kid should have to learn the electric fence lesson. I know oh, I learned man. mine. Do y'all remember y'all? Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, tell us about it. Tell me about your electric fence lesson because I guarantee you got one. Well, I grew up with electric fence. And sometimes back in those days, and I'm pretty old now, the voltage wasn't quite right on those fences. It was pretty powerful. <laughs> and I actually witnessed it burn a chicken's leg off one time. Goodness live chicken. Ho, 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 ho. But, give me that. I got to have it. You can't, you can't <laughs> just give me a, a chicken's leg, leg off. off. Tell me this story. Yeah, well, we were up at my great uncle's house, and he was widely known as, as a guy who made white lightning. But he was, you know, it was very rural. They didn't even have indoor plumbing when I was a kid. And uh, we were up there playing, and he had a hot wire, electric wire around his hog pen. Yes. Got to keep and, the hog in there. Yeah. And um, we were just sitting, you know, we were playing. I just happened to notice this chicken walked up and, and touched that wire, and it must have been like 220 volts. He done, <laughs> he done took, he hooked the other leg up. You could see the smoke come off of it. <laughs> I mean, it literally just cauterized it. Yeah, and you know, they didn't have breakers and fuses that, you know. It just kept nice cooking. Seats. That's right. It just hung on to him and uh, it was, I never will forget it. <laughs> it's did, very memorable. Did the chicken live? The chicken was Sunday dinner. Oh, <laughs> you just said, you went ahead and finished frying him up. We ain't gonna have no one leg of chicken. We're gonna eat it. <laughs> that's incredible. That's very that's scary. Yeah. That is scary. Man, but- you know, a few years ago, I went up to a guy's place up in uh, Holly Pond. Uh, I, I, back then, I had registered Herefords, and he had a nice Hereford cow that I wanted to look at. And we're walking on a summer morning. It was real early in the real heavy dew on the grass. And we're walking along. We came to a couple of strands of bob wire in the middle of a pasture. And I didn't even think about it. I reached down and grabbed that. About the time he said, don't, I touched the wire and my feet were wet. And that thing lit me up. I don't ever touch any kind of metal fence now. <laughs> no, yeah, that'll teach you, boy. <laughs> that'll rile your teeth. You know, I had, a, I had a bull that was getting out one time pretty regular. My brother taught me a trick about keeping them in. He said, you get you a McDonald's sack, and every time he gets close to the fence, you shake that sack at him. <laughs> Threat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, now Put your hamburger in there and just shake the hamburger around. Well, there's something about kids and electric fences, particularly young men, mm-hmm. boys. They like to test challenge it. themselves. They got to test it. Who can mm-hmm. touch it the longest? Mm-hmm. Now, we did that yeah. period Will of Rogers time. We did a number on that. We didn't <laughs> did really. <laughs> at that time, we didn't realize it pulses electricity. Sometimes you touch it and there's nothing happened. Mm-hmm. You're feeling pretty good about that. You touch it the next time, you get slammed or whatever. <laughs> but the funniest story I had was my next door neighbor, my, my good buddy there, had set up a, a brand new wire fence for their pigs. And it was about, oh, a foot and a half off mm-hmm. of the ground. Well, he was walking across it, and he knew it was there, but he didn't tell me it was there, and he wanted to see me get tangled up. Mm -hmm. He thought that was going to be funny. So he steps over the wire and goes a couple more feet in, and I watched him turn around just to look at me, and I don't know what he's thinking about, but I was fixing to hit that wire. But before I hit the wire, 
he took a step back and stepped on a big old pine snake. Oh. Now, that pine snake was about five or six foot long. And the last thing I remember doing is seeing him over there with the pine snake all up between his legs, all around him. <laughs> you know, looked like it was striking at him, but it was just all <laughs> was over just the place. To get away, wasn't it? And he was screaming like he couldn't, like he had been shot. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and then I just started laughing because it was the funnest thing I'd ever seen. A yeah. big old snake got on him and he got so mad of that snake and grabbed him a stick and tried to chase it around. That was even funnier right there. So he, he was fighting the electric fence and a snake all the same Oh, time. my goodness, yeah. I don't believe in karma, but if I did, that, would be, say good, that would be an absolute truth to it. That would be a true karma story. When we were talking about when we were kids, I had a cousin named Puddin. Well, his name wasn't Puddin, but we called him Puddin. <laughs> On his birth certificate, P-U-D-D-I-N apostrophe. <laughs> well, we had, somebody had nicknamed him Puddin, and, and that was, he wasn't raised on the farm like we were. We were, we knew all the tricks, right? Well, Puddin was around one day, and the, of course, we was, pushing him a little bit to touch the electric fence. You won't touch it. You won't touch it. And my daddy had told me, leave, leave putting alone. Like don't make him touch the fence. Stop aggravating him. And that really wasn't, <laughs> that's really not what I wanted to do. You know, I needed to, you need to see, it. I needed to see him touch the fence. So I don't know if it was me or my brother, I'm going to blame it on my brother, but I think my brother finally convinced him that if he, if he picked up, a piece of grass that was green and touched it, it wouldn't shock him. <laughs> well, again, a bunch of boys, you you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna let a bunch of boys tell you you you're a sissy, you know. I mean you got to you gotta really do it. So we convinced him, he picked him up a big old long piece of grass. I don't know if it was rye grass or whatever it was, but it was green. And he went over that fence and he looked back. I remember him looking back at me. Like, if you've lied to me, oh, yeah. it's on, right? <laughs> he touched that fence, and I'm talking about he let out a yell like you ain't never heard. Mm -hmm. And he just laid down on the ground, started flopping, you know, really, <laughs> like like he was a goner. And my daddy heard it and turned around and looked, what did y'all do? What is, what's happened to Pudding? And we scattered like quail. Mm -hmm. I mean, we knew what was coming. What are you talking about getting beat? We he got wore you beat out. He oh, wore man. my tail end out for making pudding touch he needed the electric to. fence. I needed that. I'm sure, I'm certain I did. <laughs> but, you know, you don't have to convince people. And maybe the better method is to try to get them to not, not do touch it. the electric I mean, fence. Yeah, so that, that, was, that was my case. We were up there, great-grandfather and uncle, working on the electric fence by the pond. You know, got to keep the cows out of the pond. It was a fishing pond. It wasn't a drinking pond. And they were up there working on an electric fence. Well, you know, I was bored. And when you're young and you're bored, what do you do? Find some trouble to get in. Well, they had told me, don't touch the electric fence. Don't touch the electric fence. And they had a uh, a wrench there. And I said, I just, it just got the best of me. I thought, why do they not want me to touch this electric mm -hmm. fence? There must be something good about it. So I was over there, and they, they quit paying attention to me. And if, you, I, if you didn't know, Philip's really close kin to Eve. Just so you yeah, know, right? Yeah. No, okay. <laughs> so I got I saw I was putting it close and nothing happened. And I looked at them and they weren't paying attention to me. And I said, I'm gonna do it. I gotta see what it man, I had you know, no, no, no rubber, no nothing on the on the wrench, just metal. As soon as I touched it, yet that thing hit me and I just Kapow. threw that wrench in the pond. I mean, it was the first, it was just like an immediate Kapow. response. Of, Whoop, and that, that thing splashed, and both of them looked up at me, and I was just sitting there going. Mm. Yeah, they no, knew, no words. Yeah, they exactly. knew exactly what had happened. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, and then the yelling commenced. I told I you told not you. to touch that fence. I, I was like, I know, I, I know you told me not to, but that's just the way it these is. fences Will are Rogers. calling to you. Yeah, they're they're yeah. calling to you to touch them. Magnetic. <laughs> Will Rogers thing about the electric fence was some people learn by reading, some people learn by observation, and some people have to pee on the electric fence for themselves. <laughs> oh <laughs> man. <laughs> Fortunately, mine was my my wrench incident was before I ever had that thought that I might want to you know relieve myself on an electric fence and I knew if it hurt my hand that much yeah. there was no sure sense in going, going any further. Yeah. <laughs> don't want to take it any further. That's You're enough. Smarter than you look. Yeah. Well, no, I would say, 
<laughs> well, maybe so. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I am. I've never been uh, I've never been uh, convicted of being super intelligent, so maybe my looks perceive me. That. That's that's why I said he's really close. He's closely related to Eve because I think Eve had that same thing. It, it got to be something good if he's telling yeah. me not to have a, any. Particularly this fruit, I got it. Got to be something good to it. It's just it's life on the farm. It's country rule. That's just yeah. what we do. That's right. Learn and, those and lessons. It should be noted: electric fences really won't hurt you. They just make you very uncomfortable for a brief second. For a time. brief second. If you're in the market for a new house, I want to tell you about our latest sponsor, Vantage Plus. So they're general contractors. They specialize in new home construction, but also they do some uh, dirt moving work. So clearing land, making roads. Y'all check them out. We'll make sure that we uh, link the website and the phone number in the show notes. I, I had an older friend that tell, told the story. He had uh, back in, you know, 50s and 60s, we didn't really have trailers. Mm -hmm. They had stakeside body trucks. And he had a big old bull he was going to sell. And he couldn't get him in the truck, kind of like you was talking about. Mm -hmm. And uh, But... He thought, well, you know, he'll come to a bucket of feed and I'll just go up in the truck and he'll follow me up in the truck and then I'll go over the cab. And so that's what he did. And sure enough, the bull ran up in the truck and somebody closed the tailgate and he went over the cab of the truck. Oh, my goodness. He said the next thing he heard was metal crunching and glass busting. The bull came right over the cab of the truck <laughs> with it. <laughs> it, just, it just kept going. It yeah. stayed in drive. Oh, right. man. A high dollar bull. Yep. That's how we did. That's Papa. It's so funny you said that because Papa Hayes, whenever he would take it, it was in a long wheel base half ton Chevrolet truck and he had made wooden yeah. boards to put down in the holes that, that go in the bed yeah. and that's Standards. how he hauled them. That's the way my dad did and we actually dug a pit. I had four brothers and we all had to dig and we dug a little pit to back that truck down so the tailgate was at dirt level and he'd walk his cows up in there we bought dairy calves you could buy them back then for a couple of bucks and raised them a couple yeah. of bucks yeah like dollars a couple of dollars yeah. yeah yeah for a cow for a calf yeah. for a well, day steel. or two old yeah. calf I mean, yeah and then we raised them we bottle fed them and raised them and got them up to about a thousand pounds and had them slaughtered and that's what we ate how much uh <laughs> how, how two, much two dollar cow yeah Dude, that's fantastic. I mean, I, I got, well, I they're got not two dollars anymore. Yeah, yeah. 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 anymore twenty dollars. You were, keep in mind, this was the late fifties, early sixties. Yeah, boy, things have changed, haven't they? Oh, really? They have changed. Well, you know, one thing you you got to remember about bulls, and that is, you can never trust them. I and trust I don't them. care how long you've been around bulls, how long you've had them, whether you've pet on them. Fed them by hand, it doesn't matter. You cannot trust a bull. And that's one thing we're careful of. We get out there yeah, around these animals, keep your eyes open because <laughs> they can they can sneak up on you. I've had them do that to me. I'd be feeding yeah. feeding hay and for a second quit paying attention. And all of a sudden, right beside me, something will hit my arm and look back there and there'll be a 1,800, 2,000-pound bull. And they don't remember who you are all the time. I mean, they know, they, they know you. I shouldn't say that, but uh, yeah. if they, they forget if, how big they are. They forget yeah. how big they are. I can, yeah. We had a we had a bull that was you loaf bread. Mm. He was like a puppy with loaf bread. If you had a <laughs> loaf bread in your hand, he wanted it, and we would feed him and run out of loaf bread. I mean, you only got so many slices, you know. But he'd want the whole thing. Well, you'd turn around to walk out, and he would just. Just bump you, and it would feel like a Mack truck yeah. Yeah. hit you when he when he just just bump you because there ain't no give in a two thousand pound bull like when right. they think it's to, funny to hit yeah, you with a just, like just that. a little and but he would he would just bump you just with his just the front of his head right there man it would hurt it's like a wrecking ball it was just like a wrecking ball just right in the back yeah bulls have big old heads on them and they they can do some damage and they. That's the other thing about a, a about a cow. You know, we can use what is it like eighty percent of our strength, like our true strength. You can use about eighty percent. Humans just can't use a hundred percent of their power that they've got in their muscles. Mm, that's not the case for a bull. He can use one hundred percent of his muscle capacity, <laughs> yeah. and when they decide they got to go, they ain't gonna no tell stop. them otherwise. Mm -mm. Yeah, they're built to survive. That's what they're interested Bulls in. Bulls over at my place love to keep you from putting round bales of hay out on them. That is, you'll show up with a trailer and you go to ro roll a round bale off a trailer. 
to throw it down out in the field. Mm -hmm. Well, no, they think it's fun to get underneath them before it goes off, yes. take their head, and sling a thousand pounds of hay back at you. Yeah. Like it was nothing. Just with their neck. Yeah, you can, Just go out with their with, neck. you can go out with a roll of hay on a big tractor, and they get to button that roll of hay, and you feel yeah. it. You can feel them moving the tractor. Are you in the market to buy or sell a home or a piece of land? The experienced team at White Real Estate is ready to partner with you. Darren and Rhiannon White, Ryan Love, and Lisa Sloan are one call or email away. As a homeowner who has received their help, I encourage you, give them a call today at the number included in the show notes. If you've never seen two bulls get in a, a legit fight, you've never really witnessed. I mean, you know, a lot of people deer hunt or whatever, you've probably seen bucks fight. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's impressive. But like you said, 2,000 pounds of beef. Pushing one another around. Mm. We had to, my brother bought a Simmental bull and we had an Angus bull and he, they were both pretty calm. The Angus bull, particularly, he, he was a pet. The Simmental, Simmental bull, he was a little more aggressive than the Angus bull. That's just in their nature. Mm -hmm. We put them together. My brother, I kept telling him, I said, I don't think we need to put them together. He said, like, man, we ain't got no option. We got to pull them off the cows. We only have one pasture to put them in. It was a rented pasture. And uh, I told him, I said, well, I think we need to at least separate them from in the fences. He's like, well, we can do that. I don't, I think I agree with you there. We separated them in fences. Well, that we didn't know that there was a weak spot in that fence, in the cross fence. They found the weak spot. Like you said. And they began, began to fight. Amongst their sales. <laughs> I like the begins. That begins. was good. I mean, that, you could have come with something new today. <laughs> they they began to fight. <laughs> and, kind of and when they started fighting, not only did the weak spot get tore down, but 30 feet more of five strand barbed wire fence got tore down. And the fella had a storage building of some sort, a, a cinder block storage building. They ran into the cinder block storage building busted one of the walls down and i'm i'm just sitting there with my hands on my head like this guy's gonna he's never gonna let us get back on uh, he's gonna kick us off this place sure as the world and he come out there he thought it was fun he was just dying laughing and we're you know we're <laughs> wide-eyed like pale as it can be because we're this is these two and you're not stopping them no you can you can holler you can you can until one of them decides they're gonna give up that's what it's going to take. You ain't stopping them. They tore the world up. They tore the world. That's what they do. But had one break a cross tie in half not too long ago in a catch no pan. No way. A Broke Chris it right in cross half. Tie? Yeah. Wow. Railroad but, tie. But those bulls that we used to take care of our ladies, our cows, and such like that are a whole lot different than the bulls we see at the rodeo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, no doubt about at it. At the rodeo, yeah. those are some big – you think they're mean. They, they're some of the toughest animals I've ever seen, to yeah. tell you the truth. I didn't realize how much it was until last year when we had a rodeo. And the contractor, at a, a couple of days before, when I went to visit one of his other rodeos, uh, he said, I want you to watch this bull. Its name was Wehatki Tom Tom. In four <laughs> years, it had never been ridden. He said, I'd Say like that you to. Name again, we had <laughs> We had Kid Tom Tom. <laughs> and he said, I want you to watch this bull. I said, okay, I'll sit there and watch it. No, come over here. He put me down right beside, crouched down beside the bucking chute where they're going to release it. So I'm looking at this bull at, you know, eight or nine feet. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, I'm like, well, it's a pretty good sized bull. Well, they opened that <laughs> gate. He came out of there like thunder. Mm hmm. Cowboy went flying within two seconds, but then he bucked right over there. I would say he was about a foot and a half from my face. And for a split second, we went eye to eye. Mm -hmm. And I knew, was was yeah. I, I knew who was boss. I knew who was in charge. And I was hoping that that panel was strong enough to do its job. Mm -hmm. I'm like, goodness gracious, the power was yeah. incredible. And you better right. recognize that when you're out in the field with, the, with sure. an animal. Yeah, the it. animals in rodeos are performers. They're athletes. Oh, yeah. man. They that, are they, amazing They animals. do that for a living, mm -hmm. essentially. That's right. I got. I had a buddy or a friend of ours that lives across the street here, you know, Miguel. He thought he was a cowboy one day. We had <laughs> we had an old bull up here at the 
watering trough and and we couldn't ever get him caught. He he was just he was just smart. He wasn't wild. He was just smart. You know, you'd set him up and he'd say, nah, I'm not going that way. And he just kind of sidestepped the gate he was supposed to go in. And we had to get him moved. And me, I said, I can I can get him. I can get him. I said, man, Stacy, I don't his real name's Stacy, but I said, Stacy, I don't think you need to mess with him. Well, I was gone one day and my brother sends me a video. <laughs> The bull had gotten up to the water trough, and Stacy crawls up, sneaks up with a rope, and a he, rope. yeah, a rope. Okay, he gets he he just tosses the rope around that bull's head. Well, again, the the bull was not <laughs> wild; he was just slippery. Stacy cinches down on it. About the time he yanks on it, that bull says, "I got somewhere else to be." And he turns, and the, in the video, you see he's skiing behind that bull. <laughs> Just <laughs> good grief, man. <laughs> the bull's going another way, and Stacy's coming with him. And I said, hey, he thought he was a cowboy that day, buddy, but he learned real fast that he was not going to hold that bull in, in one spot. I just hope that he didn't think that he was. No, he 1,000% thought he was. That, no. This is, yes, I guarantee you, if you were to interview him today, which we need to one day, get him yeah, on the show. He would be a good one. And he would tell you he for sure thought that he could hold that bull in, in, in place. That's a tug of war you're never going to win. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, you're not going to win. You can barely one. hold a 300-pound calf yeah, in place. Yes, yes. That's true. That's right. Well, now you guys are, so we've talked about cows, we've talked about farming. So you guys are with the Jefferson County Cattlemen's Association. So uh, tell everybody a little bit about your organization. Well, the Jefferson County Cattlemen's Association is an affiliate to the Alabama Cattlemen's Association. That association is about 10,000 strong here mm -hmm. in the state of Alabama. We're one of the largest associations and we promote cattle and beef mm -hmm. uh, around the state. Uh, we do other things as well. We promote our community. We promote education. Uh, we do a lot of things uh, that are service-related that we believe are, are important to our yeah. community. And uh, uh, Jim has been involved probably longer than I have with the cattlemen. He may have a few words to say. Well, um, you know, personally, um, I had a, a little thing they wrote a book about the Cattlemen's Association. I guess, you know, farmers get bored, so they write a book about a Cattlemen's Association. <laughs> I didn't but know they got bored. Yeah, yeah. but it's uh, but it's kind of interesting. I was reading this book, and it and it started talking about the Jefferson County Cattlemen's Association. It was founded and incorporated in 1953, the year I was born. So I thought, well, that's interesting. I read on, and I'm leasing land from a guy next to my place, and it turns out his dad was the first president. Mm. Of Jefferson County, so I carried the book to him, and I, you know, what's the name I, of the book? Um, winning is, let's say, winning isn't everything. Okay, but it, it's, you know, there are other books by that title, by the way. But um, yeah, make sure this <laughs> is, <what> it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I, I take it to this guy, and I showed him. I said, you know, your dad was the first president of the Cattlemen Association. I didn't know that. He said, man, I didn't know that either, and he was in tears. Huh. His dad's long since passed. So it's kind of, you know, it, it kind of taught me real quick what this means to a lot of people. Yeah. And so I get, a, we enjoy it. We get a kick out of it. And this rodeo thing is just taking it to a whole nother level. Well, that's what we want to talk about. So last year was the first rodeo you guys had put on. Absolutely. So I, I got to go. It was a great. It event. really was our first rodeo. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Not just uh, figuratively speaking. So tell me about uh, tell me about that last year. So you, you blood, sweat, and tears are in this thing, and just tell me, take me back to that when it all come to a head. There, it came to a head the opening night, and we're sitting there, and we've been working our rear ends off, and we have some wonderful volunteers, we have some excellent sponsors who all stepped up to help mm -hmm. to make this work. So you don't think one or two people. There's a there's a community here, but. You're sitting there, and you're not sure who's going to show up, if anyone. Yeah. And you watch that road down in front of you. And over time, I remember last year sitting up on the hill and watching as the time got close and the car started coming. Mm. And it reminded me of that movie, Field of Dreams. Remember oh, yeah. the very end of that movie where they turn on the lights and people start coming down the road and you see yeah. a big old long line? 
looked just like it. Line of cars. Line mm-hmm. of cars coming. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yep. Here they come. <laughs> now it's what are we real. doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's real. It's real. And, now and, the work starts. And, right. and, and we got to, we got to, we got to move with it. No mm. doubt about it. And more and more came and, uh, it was just the most wonderful feeling to see all those folks coming out to enjoy a rodeo. Now, you know, there hadn't been a lot of rodeos in our area Mm-mm. over the last few years, and we wanted to put on a good one. And I think we were successful in doing that. I but, agree. but I'll never forget that the rest of my life, yeah. watching all those folks come up through there. You know, we had our own exit right off the highway, so it was easy yeah. for folks to come yeah. on through. It's like your personal exit. We That's got right. them, we got them set up in their parking and such, and then we did. Our people did such a good job that coming in when everybody thought they were going to be sitting around for a while, we had the parking lot cleared in 20 minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah. There won't be a more accessible rodeo you've ever been to. No. Yeah. Right off I-65, exit 280, you can drive right into it. You get yeah. off and drive into the rodeo. Yeah. There yeah. you are. Hallmark oh. Farms, beautiful, historic farm. Everybody's just about, if you've come down 65 South, you kind of remember it. It's so beautiful. So the dates are April 26th and 27th. Parking starts at six. At six. Show at seven. Mm-hmm. Right. Shows at seven, and uh, we ha- we're telling folks come early. You better because we're gonna we're gonna start actually a little pre-show with that first mutton busting. So come on early. <laughs> uh, there's plenty of food to eat. There's plenty of things to drink out there, uh, and, and just uh, might you know we we did pretty well last year. In fact, we won an award for the top new. Outdoor rodeo in the southeast. Right here. We did would like to tell you folks that we rodeo rain or shine. So yep. unless it's, Okay, so if it's raining, if it's raining, put a put, put a rain, rain coat on. Put your rain coat on. That just come makes on. it more fun. I can guarantee <laughs> you, boy, it does. You've given us a lot of great stories, great information about something that's near and dear, whether you know it or not. We appreciate it and we wish you all the best on the rodeo. Certainly. Thank you. Sell out appreciate your nights. time. Enjoyed it. We Thank look you forward guys. to seeing everyone there. All Appreciate right. your interest. Well, this is the Hayden Outbound Podcast. I'm Philip. I'm Shane. I'm Steve. And I'm Jim. We'll see you next time.